Could a blast of water really stop a pirate armed with an AK-47? It might sound like a scene from a Hollywood blockbuster, but on the high seas, water cannons are the first line of defense against piracy. But let's be real, is that enough to protect a massive cargo ship and its crew? Imagine this. Somali pirates, notorious for their ruthless attacks, converge on a U.S. Navy cruiser and destroyer. The stakes couldn't be higher. But why aren't these commercial giants armed to the teeth with real firepower? Is it really enough to rely on deafening sound blasts that can pierce through earplugs? Or a simple hose turned into a makeshift weapon? And here's the big question. Once pirates breach the deck, what desperate measures can the crew take to regain control? Or is it already too late? What do you think? Could more aggressive tactics on board be the answer to pirate attacks? Or does this escalate the danger for everyone involved? Stay tuned as we dive into the depths of maritime defense tactics and the razor-thin margins between safety and catastrophe at sea. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join us in uncovering the truth behind these high-stakes encounters. Imagine you're aboard a massive cargo ship traversing the vast and often lawless waters of the high seas. How would you protect your vessel, crew, and cargo from the ever-present threat of piracy? It's a scenario that shipping companies face every day and their approach to maritime security is as layered and complex as the defense strategy of a fortified castle. First, let's discuss the initial defense mechanism, known as the discouragement layer. Similar to installing a security camera outside your home, this layer isn't designed to stop pirates by force, but aims to prevent their attempts from escalating. One innovative tactic involves placing dummies around the ship to simulate a larger crew presence. It's a simple psychological trick that suggests the ship is constantly being watched, potentially deterring less determined pirates right off the bat. Adding to this visual deterrence, ships can employ dazzling lasers. These beams can temporarily blind and disorient pirates as they approach, making it difficult for them to maintain their course or aim weapons. It's a non-lethal but effective method to increase the risks for pirates without engaging in direct confrontation. The discouragement layer also includes tactical maneuvers such as increasing the ship's speed. A faster-moving ship is a harder target to board, especially under manual power like most pirate skiffs. This simple action can exploit the pirate's limited resources and discourage pursuit due to the higher risk and effort required. However, the centerpiece of this layer is the use of long-range acoustic devices. LRADs, LRADs serve a dual purpose. They can first be used to hail approaching boats, providing a chance for identification and warning. If the pirates ignore these warnings, the LRAD can emit an extremely loud directed sound that is physically painful, akin to standing behind a jet engine. The intensity of this noise can penetrate even through ear protection due to bone conduction technology, which transmits sound directly through the skull to the inner ear. This non-lethal weapon can be so disorienting and uncomfortable that it often causes pirates to withdraw, seeking easier targets. Should these measures fail and a pirate skiff continues its approach, the ship's second layer of defense, the anti-boarding layer, comes into play. This involves physical barriers designed to prevent pirates from boarding the vessel. One particularly clever device is a system that deploys ropes or nets around the ship. These ropes float on the surface and are designed to entangle the propellers of approaching boats, immobilizing them. This can stop a pirate boat dead in the water, literally, making it incredibly difficult for attackers to proceed without significant risk of capsizing or damaging their own vessel. Additionally, some ships are equipped with retractable wire barriers that can be deployed along the sides and stern. These barriers act like the barbed wire of the sea, posing a serious physical challenge to pirates attempting to climb aboard. Each of these layers serves to increase the time and effort required for pirates to succeed, enhancing the ship's chances of escaping or receiving assistance. The effectiveness of these measures often lies in their ability to function synergistically, creating a formidable gauntlet that tests the resolve and resources of any potential attacker. An integral part of maritime defense against pirates is the strategic use of water cannons. These devices are not only powerful, but versatile, serving as an essential deterrent much like riot control tools on land. The cannons can unleash high-pressure jets of water capable of swamping and potentially sinking smaller approaching pirate boats. Some water cannons are equipped with remote operation capabilities, allowing the crew to activate them from the safety of the ship's interior, avoiding direct exposure to potential gunfire. Variations in cannon design further augment this defense mechanism. Some models are fixed, 
spraying water in multiple directions to create a disorienting and wet barrier around the ship. Others feature rotating heads, which continuously douse the sides of the vessel, making it extremely difficult for pirates to attach grappling hooks or climb aboard. Additionally, the water curtain system employs a specially designed sinker weight that keeps the nozzle close to the water's surface, producing a high-pressure spray from a restrictive nozzle. This creates a violently lashing hose that would be perilous and painful for any pirate attempting to breach it. To complement these water-based defenses, ships also employ more traditional physical barriers. Barbed wire and razor wire are time-tested methods easily deployable on deck to thwart any attempts at climbing aboard with ladders. The setup is swift, ensuring that in moments of sudden pirate approaches, the ship can be quickly secured. Another effective deterrent are safety barriers, specifically designed to prevent pirates from securing their ladders to the ship. These barriers are attached directly to the sides of the ship, presenting an insurmountable obstacle for pirates attempting to board. Their unique shape and the gap they create make it incredibly challenging for pirates to overcome, even with ropes or grappling equipment. Traditionally, anti-boarding measures on cargo ships have been meticulously designed to repel pirates arriving by sea. However, a startling incident on November 19, 2023, demonstrated that threats can come from unexpected quarters. The Israeli-owned cargo ship, Galaxy Leader, traveling along a Red Sea shipping route, faced an unprecedented type of attack when a helicopter descended upon it, deploying a group of armed Houthi rebels and, surprisingly, a professional videographer. This audacious approach took the 25-member crew completely by surprise, leading to a hostage situation aboard the vessel. Given the traditional focus on sea-based threats, the crew was unprepared for an assault from the air. But what could have been done differently? In the dire circumstance of a hijack, when hostile forces have already boarded a ship, the options for the crew become severely limited. Traditionally, the most effective nonviolent response is for the crew to issue a mayday call to alert international maritime authorities, then shut down the ship's engines and retreat to a specially designed safe room known as a citadel. This secure area is engineered to be impervious to external entry, essentially sealing off the crew from the attackers. This strategy relies on the premise that pirates, typically lacking the technical skills to operate complex vessel systems, cannot use the ship or its crew as leverage if they cannot access them. Isolated and unable to navigate the ship, the pirates are left with little choice but to abandon their efforts, especially as naval or coast guard reinforcements approach. However, the hijacking of the Galaxy Leader by Houthi rebels in November 2023 showcased a scenario where even well-prepared defenses could falter. Strikingly, this attack came from the air, a method so unconventional in maritime piracy that the crew was unprepared to implement their standard countermeasures effectively. The Galaxy Leader, primarily used as a car carrier, was empty of vehicles at the time, indicating that the hijacking was not for cargo theft but was driven by political motives. The rebels' unexpected method of entry and the political nature of their mission complicated the typical response strategies. Since the hijacking, the Houthi rebels have anchored the Galaxy Leader in a bay off the Yemeni coast, transforming it into an unlikely tourist attraction, a stark symbol of their control and a propaganda tool. As of January 2024, images of visitors taking selfies with the captured vessel have circulated, highlighting the ongoing geopolitical complexities that can influence piracy and maritime security. This incident illustrates a critical need for maritime security strategies to adapt to the evolving tactics of pirates and political insurgents alike. For the shipping industry and global security forces, the Galaxy Leader serves as a poignant reminder of the ever-changing landscape of maritime threats and the imperative for continuous innovation in ship defense mechanisms. Piracy, though often romanticized, varies greatly in method and motive depending on the region. Take Somali pirates, for instance. Their primary tactic has traditionally been to seize ships and hold their crews hostage, demanding ransom for their release. A notable incident was the 2008 hijacking of the Ukrainian cargo ship Faina. Somali pirates held the vessel and its 20 crew members captive for four months, only releasing them after a ransom of $3.2 million was securely airdropped to them. The ship and its crew were freed the following day, demonstrating a transactional approach to piracy where the primary interest is financial gain. In contrast, the Gulf of Guinea experiences a different piracy dynamic. Pirates in this region typically focus on the cargo rather than the crew. They commandeer ships, transfer the valuable cargo to their vessels in a high-stakes ship-to-ship operation, 
and release the crew and vessel once their loot is secured. This process can last up to 10 days, showcasing a distinct piracy method focused on immediate material rewards rather than prolonged hostage situations. Given these varied threats, the shipping industry continuously adapts its routes and strategies. For example, in response to repeated attacks by Yemen-based Houthi insurgents as of late December 2023, a significant portion of the container ship fleet that typically travels through the Red Sea and Suez Canal has begun diverting their course. Opting for the longer journey around the African continent, these ships endure up to an additional week of travel, which not only increases fuel consumption and delays, but also escalates shipping costs. Meanwhile, those who continue to navigate the traditional routes face sharply higher insurance premiums due to the elevated risks. These strategic reroutings and financial adjustments are critical as they reflect the shipping industry's ongoing efforts to mitigate risks and protect their assets and crew from the evolving landscape of global piracy. It underscores the complex decisions that maritime companies must make in response to the geographical and political dynamics that influence pirate activities. While the idea of arming crew members on merchant ships seems like a straightforward solution to pirate attacks, the reality is fraught with legal and practical challenges. In international waters, ships must adhere to the regulations of the flag state they are registered under. Some of these nations allow their vessels to carry arms. However, complications arise as these ships enter the diverse legal jurisdictions of international ports where local laws may prohibit firearms. Beyond the legal issues, there's also a practical concern about the primary role of ship crews. They are trained to operate vessels, not engage in combat, which adds an additional layer of responsibility and risk that many might be reluctant to accept. To address these challenges, some shipping companies opt for hiring private security personnel who are specially trained and equipped to handle pirate threats. These security teams are thoroughly vetted to comply with international regulations, ensuring they can operate legally across different territorial waters. This approach allows crew members to focus on their primary duties, while security experts manage the defense of the ship. History shows that significant piracy problems often prompt military responses. During the peak of Somali piracy in 2011, where 212 pirate attacks were reported, the international community saw a pressing need to intervene. The World Bank estimated these disruptions cost the global economy approximately $18 billion. In response, naval forces, including the U.S. and its allies, formed Combined Task Force 150, focusing on deterring and disrupting pirate operations in Somali waters. One memorable incident occurred on March 18, 2006, when Somali pirates armed with RPGs and small arms engaged the U.S. Navy destroyer USS Gonzalez and the cruiser USS Cape St. George. This confrontation highlighted the intensity of the pirate threat. In defense, the American vessels returned fire with smaller caliber guns, leading to a decisive moment when a .50 caliber tracer round from the USS Gonzales set a pirate skiff ablaze, effectively destroying it down to the waterline. This event underscored the crucial role of naval forces in maintaining safety and security in international shipping lanes. Navies have historically played a crucial role in securing global shipping lanes. Recently, after Houthi rebels targeted commercial ships and U.S. naval vessels in the Red Sea, the U.S. and British forces conducted air raids on Houthi targets in Yemen on January 11, 2024. This action underscores the strategic importance of protecting vital trade routes. Following these attacks, on January 17, 2024, the United States designated the Houthis as a specially designated global terrorist group. This move aims to curb their disruptive activities and reinforces the commitment of global powers to maritime security. The evolving tactics of pirates and political insurgents highlight the critical role of navies in ensuring the safety of global shipping routes. As threats continue to change, so too must our strategies to counter them. If you found this video informative, please like and subscribe to our channel for more content on maritime security and global shipping. Thanks for watching.